We're gonna be making a tier list of every Ratchet and Clank original trilogy weapon. Now, the what I'm going to be incorporating into this video, um, the the way that I'm going to be judging the criteria, one, ammo cost or not ammo cost, weapon cost. Ammo cost is one thing. I think weapon cost though is actually pretty significant. Um, two, general killing power. And three, uh, overall weapon usefulness. Now, that's a kind of a broad way of describing um, things that are useful both for killing enemies and uh, for the speedruns of the games. So again, keep in mind, weapon cost, weapon power, and overall utility and usefulness. I will not be doing repeats. Instead, I will try to come up with a decent average of like overall utility like for example uh, the walloper is in ratchets one and two and so instead of viewing them as two separate weapons i'll kind of like combine them into one like weird amalgamation of a weapon 53 files right there this isn't gonna work for some reason okay so i'm just gonna go with what what i have here right now this is gonna be a rough estimation I, again, I don't know why only 20 of these are showing up. It's really stupid, and I don't know why that happens, but whatever. We're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna start with, uh, the blaster. The Rack 1 blaster. This weapon's pretty decent. Uh, it doesn't cost that much. It's like, what, 7,500 bolts, I think. Casually, it's pretty useful, because ammo's pretty cheap. Deals a lot of damage, and it actually, believe it or not, used to be the go-to weapon in Ratchet 1 speedruns for killing Drek. I'm gonna put this, I think this is a pretty run-of-the-mill weapon. This is pretty, like, standard. I'm gonna say this is B tier. I might move some shit around as I keep going. I think that's a pretty fine placement. It's like, it's kind of like what I would expect out of the average Ratchet & Clank weapon. It's not super powerful, it's not super expensive, and it has a lot of uses. Up next, I believe this is the Chopper. The Chopper in, in Rack 2 overall is pretty weak. Um, its final upgrade is pretty useful, but... Overall, it's not super good at the very beginning, and it costs a lot of ammo to kill anything. Again, the upgrade is fine, but you can say that about literally every ratchet weapon, that the upgrade is, is really, really good. I would say overall, I'm going to put this in D tier. It's fine for like the first couple levels, but it, it gets really bad really quickly. I'm not a huge fan of this. I may move it up. I may not. I think, I think D is fine. Okay, so this is the Clank Zapper. The Clank Zapper is by far the worst weapon in the entire OG trilogy. It's not even a question. This is a very solid F tier. In fact, I would say there is not a single weapon worse in any regard, in any capacity. It does no damage, it costs a million bolts, it's completely useless, not even the upgrade is good. The Synthenoids do everything the Clank Zapper does and 50 times better. N60 is worse. Believe it or not, I would actually say the N60 is better than this hot pile of garbage. And you know how I feel about the N60 storm. The biggest reason why this thing is so stupid is because it costs a million bolts. If it didn't cost- if it only cost like 10,000, I'd be like, Alright, yeah, whatever. Of course it's gonna be bad for 10,000 bolts. It costs a million bolts for as useless as a weapon as it is. This is by far the worst. I'm going to try to order the weapons within the tiers, although it's gonna be a little tricky. So up next- what is it called in this game? The Devastator? This is the Devastator in, in, in Rack 1, yes? The Devastator overall, I would say is actually really solid. It's a really solid weapon. What does it cost? Like 40,000, I think? Which is really expensive, maybe a little bit less. But it's super useful. It does a lot of damage. The ammo isn't super expensive. It's only 20k? Well, then it's even better. I would say this is easily one of the best weapons in Ratchet 1. I hesitate to put it in S tier just because there's some really fucking busted weapons. So I'm gonna drop this in A tier for now and kind of reassess as we move forward. Is it only 10,000? Jesus. Okay, that's actually really good. This this is either going to be the top of A tier or the bottom of S tier. Like, it's either going to be the absolute best weapon in the A tier, or it's gonna be just, like, the very, very worst of S tier. Although I think there's a lot of stuff that's gonna fall within S tier. Keep in mind that SS is, like, the tippy top. There's only gonna be, like, three or four weapons in SS tier. Okay, so up next, I believe this is Drone Device. The Drone Device is actually really solid. Unfortunately, it's not super useful. It's not, it's like, if the shield charger didn't exist, I would, I would consider putting this in S tier or A tier, but because the shield charger exists, this weapon I don't think is as good. It does a really good job of blocking shots, but only a little bit. It does some damage to the enemies around you, but again, you kind of have to keep toggling the drone device every, like, every few seconds if you want it to be super useful. 
I'm gonna say overall, because of the existence of the shield charger, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this in C tier. It overall is fine. I think it's okay. I don't think it's D tier worthy. I still think it's better than than some of the weapons that will be in D tier. Drone device is kind of expensive. Yeah, it, it's like the same price as the Devastator and far less useful. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna put it in D tier for now. I'm gonna put it just above the chopper for right now. Okay, so now we have the Infector. Is this the Infector? No, this isn't the Infector. This is- Oh, no, 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 this is the Hover Bomb. The Hover Bomb is low-key one of the best weapons in Ratchet 2. It's actually, believe it or not, like the, the most DPS you can possibly get in Ratchet 2. There is no individual weapon that does more damage than the, than the, than the Hover Bomb in Ratchet 2. It is completely, unbelievably broken. If you- Okay, hold on. Can somebody link me a video of poking? I need to show them a video of poking, and then I'm gonna justify my, my tier list. So SS is gonna be reserved for the best weapons in the entire series, right? This is easily S tier. If you guys have never seen poking, I'm gonna show you poking, and it's gonna blow your fucking mind. This is gonna be really good, especially for the people watching this video who don't really know a whole lot about speedruns. This is a really- I'm gonna- I'm gonna pull up clips of why certain weapons are beyond busted. Poking is ridiculous. It is- I'm gonna show you. Now keep in mind, casually this weapon is okay. I think Rhino 2 is better casually. However, this weapon is, is just so unbelievably insane. Okay, this is Fear's world record in Ratchet 2 New Game Plus. I want you to see how ridiculous poking is, okay? So, normally what we used to do for this boss fight in the speedrun, we used to activate the boss's hitbox and sheep him. And sheeping took about, uh you know, 45 seconds, something like that. So look at this. We're gonna activate the launch pad. Now this is working, I'm 100% I'm sorry. Or I'm 100% not sorry, I'm not sorry about anything. Um, so now look at this, he's gonna charge forward. He's gonna land on this bridge. Now look what's gonna happen. Look how much damage it's doing to this boss. Look how quickly he's able to destroy the Snivelak boss. This is by far, this is 10 minutes faster than how you have to do it casually. Look at how ridiculous this damage is. And then he finishes him off with the Rhino because I think he's trying to conserve ammo. How is this not SS then? Because there are, are weapons that have more utility. However, for now, I will drop this in SS. I think this is by far the best weapon in Ratchet 2 and it's not even close. Casually, it costs 120,000. It's a pain to upgrade. I mean, that's true. But however, we are considering everything. We're considering casually, it still does a fuckload of damage, and 120,000 bolts is not that hard to get in Ratchet 2. It still does a shitload of damage, even in its lowest upgrade, and the utility of having a weapon where you can, like, the creativity behind it is actually really cool because you can, like, spread your shots out and, like, time your DPS a lot. Alright, the Infector is dog shit. The Infector is absolutely stupid. Almost no practical use. Um, even though it's super inexpensive, it does almost nothing. I can't imagine anybody doing anything with this weapon beyond just upgrading it to its fullest. The only thing that's kind of cool is that you can actually upgrade this weapon over and over off of singular enemies. You see this guy right here? I don't know if you guys know this or not, you can actually level the Infector off of this guy by hitting him over and over and over. You can level it up from level 6 to 7 without killing him once. So you only have to do it like on three enemies. To fully upgrade it. It's actually really cool. That's the only good thing about it though. Aside from that, it's functionally useless. So I'm gonna put it above Clank Zapper, but not by much. The lightsaber. The lightsaber is actually absurdly broken. Lightsaber is the most broken wrench by far. It's not even close. Even the Rack 2 level 2 wrench that can infinitely damage enemies is not as useful as this. Ratchet 3 wrench also has a property where your damage scales with your health. So as you get more and more nanotech, the weapon becomes more and more powerful. Meaning that even though it can't kill enemies super fast at the very beginning. Yes, the lightsaber turns you to Mace Windu. Uh, overall, it's very good. However, it's still not as good as a lot of other weapons. And obviously, it's only really useful if you want to challenge yourself to a wrench only run. So I'm going to drop this in A tier. All right, the Morpho Ray, the cock gun, the chicken gun. It's okay. Overall, it doesn't cost a dime because you find it for free. It's not super useful, but it's really good against small enemies. Not useful at all against bosses or larger enemies. And overall, when it's upgraded, it can be pretty good. I'm gonna drop this in B tier. I'm gonna drop it just below the blaster. Um, especially the biggest thing putting it in B tier for me is that it's free. 
Okay, so now is this flux rifle? Which one is this? No, that's not flux. Pulse rifle. The pulse rifle's okay. Pulse rifle is just alright. Uh, it's super cheap and it upgrades really quickly. However, it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. I would say overall it's still more useful than the stuff that's in D tier. But it's not as useful as the stuff in B tier. I'll say this will be our first entry into C tier. Up next is the Rift Inducer. Now the Rift Inducer is unbelievable. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it first and then I'm gonna justify my placement. This is an easy S tier. Is it by far like super good? No, it's not like amazing. It's not as good as some other stuff in Ouya. However, I will say that this is just a wildly good weapon. It it sucks up a lot of enemies. It makes the Annihilation Nation challenges go like that. It's super cool. It's not SS for a few reasons. Like, I think you guys understand why this is S tier. I think I need to justify why it's not S, S tier. It's not SS because it can't DPS really powerful enemies. And you're kind of limited to a few seconds on, on the ps2 version there's a glitch that can happen where a rift can stay out infinitely but i don't know how to manipulate that i don't know how to create that and on ps3 which is the better version of the game overall rifts kind of go away really quickly and if you're not looking directly at the rift it goes away super fast so even though it's really broken against smaller enemies it's not as broken as you might think so I'm going to drop it in S. Okay, so now I believe this is Rhino 2. If the hover bomb poking didn't exist, I would call this SS because it's it's the best weapon in Rack 2. However, because poking exists, I can't justify putting it in SS. I do think that this Rhino is a little overrated. However, I still have to put it in S tier. I'm going to put it just above the Rift because it is still better than the Rift Inducer, I think. For a million bolts, it kills everything. It, it's, it does, it kills every enemy, and it has really good DPS because it fires really quickly. But obviously it's a Rhino, so of course the Rhinos are going to be more broken. Also, that's super, that's a, actually a very good point, Tanner. This is the only Rhino where you can find ammo in crates. That's ridiculous. Rhino 2, I think, is SS. Maybe I'll move it up. At the very least, it's the top of S tier. I think you have to understand that S tier, we SS tier weapons are, like, groundbreaking. Like, like do shit that you wouldn't even believe so i'm gonna drop it as number one in s tier for right now and then kind of reassess a lot of this is like gonna be me reassessing things as i go along but i think my first impressions are actually pretty solid so this is the seeker the seeker is actually pretty good it does a lot of damage even early on without it being upgraded it's super cheap it's super in or it's super dps efficient it shreds the early bosses and the upgrade is actually quite good I'm dropping this. This is an easy B tier for me. I'm going to put it at the top of B tier for now and then reassess if I want to put it in A tier later. Easy? What is this? Yeah, look at this poking. Look at this. Look at how unbelievable poking is. It kills him in like two hits. The shock cannon. The shock cannon is, without a doubt, the best weapon in Ouya. This is an easy SS tier. I'm going to put it... It's actually hard to know whether I should put... I think I'm going to put this just below the hover bomb, but this is easy SS tier. It's comp it's free. It's free of charge. It's the first weapon you get in the entire game in Ouya. And it kills fucking everything. For the casual players who don't know how good the shot cannon is, if you're watching this and you've never seen a Ratchet speedrun, I'm going to show you how good it is. Just as a general example of how good it is on bosses. Now, this is a middle-of-the-game boss, the Warship. This is the V8 shot cannon. Look how quickly it blows up the Warship. One shot, two shots, three shots. It fucks up everything. It kills every single basic enemy in one hit, in one full charge. You can sweep it over and over to do damage multiple times to enemies you kill like fucking everything it's so useful it's so ridiculously useful yeah the uh upgraded version of this only costs four hundred twenty thousand bolts which is extremely dank by the way so everything about this weapon is dank like it's useful from beginning to end there's no point at which any weapon is better than this it's the best weapon in ouya and it's the first weapon you get it's easy SS tier. So Spiderbot Glove. Okay, so if this were a year ago, I would say the Spiderbot Glove is absolute shit. It's a stupid weapon. It doesn't do a whole lot on its own. 
But because we've discovered spider stacking, this is easily A to S tier material. And let me show you if you've never seen it. So the spider bot glove only costs 15,000 bolts. It's super easy to upgrade and it does a fuckload of damage. Let me show you. So this is a speedrun strat. So this is, a, this is an exclusively speedrun strat that you can do. Any of you can do this. Regardless of whether or not you're used to this game in a speedrun way or not. So you buy the spider bot glove here and you upgrade it on, on, uh, on Grelbin. So you upgrade half of it here. Oh, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> you upgrade it to half, and then you reload the game. Spiderbot glove when I first played RAC2. And you go back over here. Hold on, I'll get to that sub in a second, pardon me. So you throw a decoy down. I throw another decoy down. And look how fast this upgrades. This upgrades off of two waves of enemies. So it completely upgrades off of off of three sets of enemies. And watch what it does to the to the proto pet. So this is called spider bot stacking. You throw out one spider bot, you swap weapons, you pause, you swap back, you throw another. And now you have two spider bots and look how fast this shreds the proto pet. This saves an unbelievable amount of time in any percent speedruns. Obviously, it's not as high DPS as like the Rhino, for example. But the fact that you can do that in an any percent setting and shred the boss is just unbelievable. It saved any percent speedruns in Ratchet 2. It completely redefined how any percent speedruns in Rack 2 uh, go. So I'm going to say this is an easy S tier discovery. If not high A tier. I'm going to put it at the bottom of S tier though. Actually, I'm going to put it at A tier because it's still not amazing casually. It did save the speedrun. However, in a casual sense, even though it's super cheap, it's still not very useful casually. I'm going to kind of uh, call it a compromise and put it in A tier. I'm going to put it at the top of A tier. All right. So now we have, I'm going to just go alphabetically at this point, because that's the easiest way for me to do it. The Annihilator, overall, is decent. It's a pretty good Ouya weapon. Overall, the Annihilator's a little bit worse than the Devastator. I would say it's still pretty useful, although it costs, obviously, the bolt inflation's a little bit more extreme. I would say, overall, price-wise, they're about the same, except the Annihilator's, like, a little bit more expensive. It does a little bit less, and the upgrades are not, they're, like, pretty good. It's pretty good once it gets to V8. But it's not that good. I think it costs 150,000 bolts, Nick. Overall, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this in high B tier. And then we have the Blitz Cannon. So the Blitz Cannon is kind of bad. It's not that expensive, but it doesn't really do a lot. It it takes a lot of shots to kill any enemies. Even at its highest upgrade, it's still not very good. It's a cool looking weapon, and it feels good to use. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a physically handicapped version. It's like, it's like the shock cannon fell off a cliff and became a quadriplegic. That's kind of what the Blitz Cannon is like. It does kind of the same thing, but it, it, it kind of just wants to be left alone and just like, it's kind of in like a weird vegetative state, you know? I'm gonna say overall this is a D tier weapon. It's worse, I would say, than the than the uh, Pulse Rifle. Although it feels good to use. I'm, I'm still gonna put it in D. I don't, I don't really see, I don't really see it being that good. Base the blitz gun off of how OP it was in multiplayer? It was OP. Oh my god. You're right. I forgot about that. In Ouya multiplayer, the blitz cannon is unbelievable. It's actually so ridiculously busted. Uh, yeah, I, ha I have to consider that. Okay, so even though I don't think it's necessarily very good in casual Rack 2 play, in Ouya multiplayer, it is the best weapon. Aside from like maybe the mind glove. The mind glove is busted in Ouya multiplayer. But the Blitz Gun is, is like, so ridiculous just for PvP combat. So I'm actually going to reassess my, my original rating. I actually think I underrated it casually as well. I'm going to drop this in, in... I'm going to drop this in A tier. I'm actually going to drop it in A tier. It's the most busted Ouya multiplayer weapon. And it's pretty... Ah! Ah! I feel bad about making it jump so high. It's still not that good. And Ouya multiplayer has its own meta anyway. Okay, I, I feel like I've tempered my expectations. I'm gonna put this 
above the blaster, but not not above the seeker. That's what I'm gonna. That is my final placement. I'm gonna put it just above the blaster. I feel like the blaster is like the true neutral weapon. I don't think there's any weapon that has like a more average DPS cost efficiency ammo purchasing count. You know, I think it's by far like the five out of ten weapon. And I think saying that things are above it is saying that they're actually pretty good. And if they're below it, they're actually pretty bad. Can we make a G tier for Clank Zapper specifically? Actually, can I do that? I'm going to do that right now. Clank Zapper gets its own tier of terrible. Bomb Glove. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an average of the Rack 2 and the Rack 1 Bomb Glove. The Rack 1 Bomb Glove is the first weapon you get in Rack 1. It's actually pretty good. It does a lot of damage for a base weapon. It's pretty useful against almost every basic enemy, except for like the later ones. Like the tanks, it's not very good against. The flying enemies, it's not very good against. It just does a lot of damage. It does a lot of damage and it can clear crowds. However, the Rack 2 Bomb Glove is beyond broken. I don't think you guys understand. If you guys are calling this B tier, you have no idea how good the Bomb Glove is. I'm gonna pull up, it's not even used in Rack 2. You want to bet? First off, the gold bomb glove costs 2,000 bolts. 1,000. And this is if you don't even have a Ratchet 1 save file. If you, do, if you don't have a Ratchet 1 save file, 1,000 to buy it, 1,000 for the upgrade. 2,000 bolts total. So first off, it kills waves of enemies. It kills every single one of these enemies in the arena in one hit. First off, it kills all of them in one hit. Manto's throwing more bombs than he needs to, but it kills them all in one hit. So now look at the damage it does to Chainblade. Look how much damage this does to Chainblade. This is going to kill Chainblade in 10 seconds. That's a, that's, this is an absurd amount of damage. I hope you guys are aware of this. And look at the B2 Brawler. Look at the B2 Brawler damage. He's gonna kill the B2 Brawler in less than 15 seconds. Like, this isn't that much worse than the Rhino. The damage on the Gold Bomb Glove is unbelievable. For a weapon that costs only 2,000 bolts. This is easily A tier. Easily. If not, I would actually, because it only costs 2,000 bolts maximum, I would actually put this in low S tier. It's so ridiculously useful. I'm going to put it in high A tier for now, but I may actually reassess that to low S. Okay, so up next we have the bouncer. And I don't think anybody actually gauges the bouncer correctly. The bouncer is not SS tier. The bouncer is nowhere near SS tier. And if you guys think it's SS tier... You are fooling yourselves. The bouncer is good. The I'm not saying it's not good. The bouncer is not great. You guys are heavily o overestimating the damage output of the bouncer. I would say it's no better than A tier. You guys have to consider. Look at the weapons we're comparing this against. Are you seriously trying to tell me that the bouncer is as good as the Rhino 2 and the Rift Inducer? Rift Inducer s kills enemies in one second. The bouncer has a low refresh rate casually, unless you do wrench tech. If you swing your wrench, you can fire the bouncer over and over, but even still it doesn't do that much damage. It's not good against bosses. It costs a fuckload. It costs an absolute fuck ton of money. It's above average. It's like a 7 out of 10 weapon. It's a 7 out of 10 weapon. I'm gonna put it at the end of A tier. I feel like you saw the bouncer go boom and you were like, oh, big gun go boom. <laughs> It's good, it's just not as good as other things. The decoy glove. The decoy glove is bare minimum the end of SS tier. This is the most useful tool in all of Ratchet & Clank speedrunning. It does everything. I actually may even put it in its own tier because it is, it's so good that it's the best weapon in multiple games. The only reason why I wouldn't put it at, as its own tier is because casually it's not the best. Casually it's pretty decent. It gets enemies away from you. The DPS is literally zero. It can't kill enemies. It can only help you run away from them. Casually it's not great. Speedrunning wise, it's ridiculously busted. You can proxy with it. 
You can do movement tech with it. You can clip through walls with it. You can keep enemies away from you with it. You can get enemies into specific spots that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get them to with it. It does fucking everything. Wrong, it can kill things. Oh yeah, that's right, it explodes when you upgrade it, right? It actually explodes. So the DPS is there, it's just kinda low. Uh, in Rack 1, it, it's pretty much only useful for clipping, but th to say that it's only useful for clipping is to deny literally every reason as to why Ratchet is a good speed game. Let me show you guys, again, for the casual viewers who may not have, because I, I do plan on uploading this to YouTube, and I expect casual Ratchet viewers to see this. I want you guys to see examples. I don't want to just say, take me at my word for it. I want to show you examples of what you can do with it in speedruns. I think actually a really good example for this is... Plat all Platinum Bolts to Dano. So, we actually do every single thing you can do on one planet. So first off, we charge off with the Decoy Glove and continue our momentum into a side flip. Then we use the Decoy Glove to proxy up this wall, go out of bounds, and collect the, the Platinum Bolt. Then, after we collect the Platinum Bolt, we go over here and use the Decoy Glove again to clip back out of here. So we don't have to reload or kill ourselves. Then we proxy up this with a decoy glove. We turn around, we proxy again up this wall with a decoy glove. Then we proxy a third time off of this. Like, none of this would be possible without the decoy glove. And this is one example. Now check this out. This is another piece of decoy tech. I throw a decoy, I high jump out of it, and it gets me into the perfect spot to collect the platinum bolt and death abuse. Then... I go back over here, I use the decoy glove to continue my momentum into a side flip over here. I proxy, or I, I decoy double jump, I proxy with the decoy glove into another double jump, again. Like literally this is just decoy tech after decoy tech after decoy tech after decoy tech. We're gonna do the, we're gonna use, we're not gonna use the decoy here, although I could use the decoy if I wanted to. And then I do one last bit of decoy movement tech. To get over to here. And if I wanted to, let's say I'm doing um, an any percent run. Let me show an any percent run real quick. You can drop a decoy on top of these rocks and it infinitely keeps this guy in place. If this guy, this guy will keep firing forever and he will never blow up that decoy. Completely making him a non-factor. You don't have the weapons to kill this guy in any percent. So what do you do? You just get him out of the way. He'll never hit you. The decoy glove is useful for literally everything. It, without the decoy glove, Rack 2 would not be a good speed game. And I, that is not an exaggeration. Like, maybe with the bomb glove it would be fine. But like, even then the bomb glove isn't as useful as the, as the, uh, as the decoy glove. I'm actually more tempted to put this higher. I'm actually tempted to put this as number one. Simply because without it, Ratchet 2 speedruns are, are terrible. Yeah, that's true. Casually, it does suck. I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm changing my opinion. I'm putting it as number one. Casually be damned. Obviously, it's not super useful casually, but there's still very creative casual uses for it. I'm gonna, I'm still, I'm still saying it's not that bad casually. I think it's at worst a 7 out of 10 casually, and it's an easy 11 out of 10 speedrun wise. As worst, as good as Bouncer. At worst, as good as Bouncer. I would say it's very different in utility. It's nowhere near 7 out of 10 casually. No, it really- No, it's not that bad casually. I'm telling you guys, it's not that bad. Okay, I'm gonna compromise. Because everybody seems to have an issue with me calling the decoy glove good casually, and this is technically a casual slash speedrun tier list, I will drop it back down to the end of SS tier. But I will go no lower. Okay, moving on. The disc blade gun. Now this is the Uyo one, right? It's okay. It's not that good. It gets better as it upgrades. The disc blade gun is okay. I mean, it's better than the Rack 2 one. It's better than the drone device. Pulse rifle... I think it's still better than the pulse rifle. And actually, the more I think about the uses, usage of the pulse rifle, the more I think I may have overrated this. I'm actually gonna drop this down to the end of C tier. I'm gonna put the disc blade gun as the only C tier weapon. It's actually pretty decent. As it upgrades, it gets better and better, and it can cut through multiple enemies. And that's pretty cool. Maybe I overrated the chicken gun. Hold on. I think that looks a little bit better. Actually, hold on. I'm gonna do- I'm gonna make this change real quick. I think that's pretty decent. If Pulse Rival hits really hard for how early you get it. Yeah, the problem is that it falls off. You know what? That's actually a pretty good point, though. I will put it at the top of D tier. Drone device is un underrated. I think that's the- that's the most I'm willing to- this is the most I'm willing to compromise on it. I don't think- I still don't think it's as good as the chicken gun. But yeah, the Disc gun gets better and better as it upgrades. It's still- it's not that good early on, but 
I think the way that it ramps up is actually much more significant than how other weapons ramp up. Up next, we have the Flux Rifle. I think people take for granted how powerful the Flux Rifle is. I believe that even casually, the Flux Rifle is unbelievably powerful. But speedrunning wise, look at this shit. In case by some grace of God you haven't seen an Up Your Arsenal speedrun, let me show you what happens at the very end. At the very end, we have to fight the Bio Obliterator. And the Bio Obliterator is a fucking health tank. If you get in the dropship and try to kill him, it takes a very long time. You kill the Bio Obliterator in 16 shots. It says I, I took 17 shots. That's because it took me one shot to get to the Bio Obliterator. The Flux Rifle is not a very versatile weapon. It's not super good from close range. You kind of have to be pretty far away to make it work. But it's ridiculously strong in solo player. It's ridiculously strong in, in multiplayer. And it's ridiculously strong in the speedrun. Oh yeah, that's a great point. If you guys don't know, without the Flux Rifle, any percent speedruns are fucked. So this is an any percent speedrun. So you get to Nefarious, right? And you have almost no weapons in an any percent speedrun. Look how much damage the shot cannon does. Barely fucking anything. And I'm fully weaving. I'm hitting him with triple hits every single time. Triple weaves. I threw out the Agents of Doom to, little, to do a little bit more damage. And even though the Agents of Doom have ridiculous DPS, it's still not that much. But now look. Look at how much damage this is going to do to, to Nefarious. Just fucking look when he goes into his next phase. So keep in mind, this is where his health bar was. It was right here. Now look at how much damage is going to happen. Look at his fucking health bar. Look at it. Look at it. It almost completely wipes him out in one go. It's an absurd amount of damage. Because the way it works is that the, the Flux Rifle, if you're really far back, it hits enemies multiple times. I don't know if you guys know that. If you're scoped in and you're really far away from the enemy, it hits them multiple times. I would say the Flux Rifle is easily S tier because it revolutionizes every category it's in. It's busted casually and it's busted multiplayer. I'm actually going to put it low SS. Wow, where do I put this? To be honest, I'm going to put it there. Bottom of S is too low. Better than Shot Cannon? Hey, actually, that's a good point. Bottom of SS tier. I still think that the, the Tetra Bomb Gun is the most broken weapon in the entire series. We only just discovered poking, and I'm going to say it's the, it's the most overpowered weapon in the entire series. I think only the Shot Cannon gives it a run for its money. Show Protopet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to see Protopet? And now I know what you guys are thinking. Well, maybe the Rhino 2 does comparable damage, you know? Maybe it's not that bad. The Rhino 2 is slower at killing the final boss than poking. Check out the final boss. So he enters the final boss fight. He pulls out the Tetra Bomb Gun. Now watch this. That's how fast he kills the Protopet. That's how fucking fast you kill the Protopet with poking. The final boss of the entire game. That's how fast you kill him. I am not fucking around when I say that the Hover Bomb is the most broken weapon in the entire series. I'm not- and that would yeah, that wasn't even fast. That was slow for poking. If he was poking properly, he could have killed him in four shots, I think. How did we not use this before? I don't know. Can somebody find a clip of, of uh, optimal poking? Hi, Check this out. Him. Look at this. Look at this. Fucking look at this. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. That. You can. Five seconds! Five fucking seconds. Try to tell me that shit's not broken. I fucking dare you. Alright, so I'm gonna combine the Agents of Doom and the Doom Glove into one because I think it's just easier to deal with that way. I honestly don't even remember the Doom Glove in Rack 1. I think it was overall just a very underwhelming weapon. In Ouya, it's actually really fucking strong. It's actually really high DPS. People don't know that. It shreds bosses. Only in any percent though. It shreds any percent bosses. It's not very good outside of any percent. Like once you hit challenge mode, it's not that good anymore. I'm actually gonna put it a little bit below the chicken gun. I'm gonna put it at the end of C tier for now. It's 60,000 bolts in Ouya, which is not that expensive. It does a fuckload of damage. It's not that good later on, and it lags a lot. So I think low end of C tier is pretty good. I could be convinced high D tier, but I think low C tier is where I'm going to put it for right now. Actually, yeah, I'm not even considering how bad it is in Rack 1. Yeah, I'm going to put it at the at the uppermost part of D tier. 
It is really bad in Rack 1. It's quite good in, in... I would I would normally put it at like low B, high C tier in Ouya, but the fact that it's bad in Rack 1, I'm gonna put it in D tier. F tier is on a whole different level of trash. It doesn't belong in, in F tier, but it does belong a little bit above the other shitty weapons. All right, so what do we have here? I'm, I'm blanking. I'm hardcore blanking. What weapon is this? Is this an upgrade? I don't recognize this. Oh, it's the upgraded... Yeah, okay, so it's the upgraded gravity bomb. Uh, so the nitro... Not the nitro launcher. Uh, mini nuke? Mini nuke is actually really fucking good. It's actually so much better than you might give it credit for. First off, it's free. It does a shitload of damage in its base upgrade or in its base version and its upgrade. It's useful for every Ratchet speedrun, aside from the NG Plus categories. So it's useful in any percent, APB, 100%, PBSPI. It just does a shit ton of damage. It's a really good weapon. This is an easy A tier. I'm gonna put it above the Devastator. No, maybe I'll put it above the, the Gold Bomb Glove. Maybe I'll put Gold bomb, bomb Glove a little bit lower, but I'm gonna put it right there for now. Okay, Hollow Shield Glove. Oh, Jesus Christ, okay. I'm gonna lead by saying, I don't think this weapon is as bad as people think it is. However, it's still fucking garbage. <laughs> I would rate it better than the Infector. I would rate it better than the Chopper. Well, I would not rate it better than the, the Pulse Rifle. Guys, it blocks damage and it heals you. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> Show the Mama Tyranoid clip. Oh, that's a good point. You guys wanna see something actually busted? I know what you're thinking. Leveling it up is actually a pain in the dick. However, you would be incorrect. Look at this. I'm gonna save your guys' lives in your next casual playthrough. I know what you're thinking. The Hollow Shield Glove is annoying to level up. It's fucking stupid. It's actually only really annoying to level up to from 1 to 2. But once you get from 1 to 2, it becomes much easier to level up. That being said, let me show you how obscenely broken the upgrading system is for this weapon. Check this out. So we have the level- Look at this. I have a Mama Tyranoid with 1 HP left. Or near 1 HP. And I have a level 1 Hollow Shield Glove. Watch what happens when I hit the Mama Tyranoid with the Shield Glove. Watch this. It's fucking crazy. If you've never seen this before, you're gonna lose your mind. Level 2. Level 3. Level 4. Level 5. You can level it to V5 off of one boss. Now, don't get me wrong. There's other enemies that you can do that to. The argument I'm trying to make here is... Leveling it to, to V2 is not that bad. And once it gets to V2, it's actually a real weapon. Until level 1, it is a shit weapon. Or until level 2, it's a dog shit weapon. Once it gets to level 2, it's actually a real weapon. The Infector is not a real weapon. <laughs> The chopper is barely a real weapon. I'm gonna put this just below the chopper. I'm gonna say it's either high F or low D. And I'm gonna give it a conservative low D for right now. You just took away my leveling complaint? That's why I want to make this video. It's not because, I, not just to rank all the weapons, but to also show all of you guys how, like, the crazy shit that happens in this game that you guys may not have even realized. Chopper's definitely worse. Actually, I agree with that. I agree with that. Chopper's pretty dog shit. I'm gonna put it just above the chopper. I think either these both belong in D tier or they both belong in F tier. The chopper sucks, dude. That weapon's dog shit. And you have to stay grounded. What do we have here? What's this one? I feel like I know this one. Lancer. The Lancer's actually pretty good. I would say it's at least as good as the, as the blaster. I would say it's everything the blaster wanted to be. And it's free. And it upgrades easily. And it does good DPS. I'm gonna move the Annihilator down. I'm gonna put the Lancer right here. Above Seeker? I wouldn't put it above Seeker. The Seeker does a shitload of damage. The Lava Gun. My personal favorite weapon in the entire trilogy is the Liquid Nitrogen Gun. However, I will try to remain as unbiased as possible. The Lava Gun itself in Rack 2 is quite good. I know the Meteor Gun is good. I've changed my opinion on that. Both of them are quite good. The Lava Gun and the Meteor Gun are actually really fucking good. In Ouya, the Lava Gun is okay. The Liquid Nitrogen Gun is nice. It's a very nice weapon. Lava Gun and Liquid Nitrogen. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. So we have Liquid Nitrogen Gun as its own weapon. I can fuck with that. Alright, so we're just gonna gauge the Lava Gun in Rack 2, the Meteor Gun, and the Lava Gun in Rack 3. And then I'll gauge the Liquid Nitrogen Gun as its own gun. Unless I should div divvy it up by game. Oh, Meteor Gun is next to turrets? 
I'm not gonna use all three. Divide it by game? Okay. They do actually operate very differently between games, but I've combined other games in previous things. However, this is the only game where um, it has two separate upgrades. So that's what I'll do. I'll judge, I'll, I'll leave the lava gun alone. I'll put it over here. I'm gonna judge the meteor gun and the liquid nitrogen gun. The liquid nitrogen gun is decent. It's a very visually cool gun and it's good for smaller enemies. However, it's not that good for bigger enemies. It's actually quite bad. And the lava gun itself is actually really cool because you can hit enemies without holding down circle. So you can like press circle, the gun spews, and then when you let go of circle and the, the weapon retracts, but as it's retracting, it, it can still hit enemies. Casually, it's a very good weapon. I believe it exists in multiplayer too, right? Isn't the lava gun in multiplayer? It's pretty good in multiplayer. I remember that. In the speed run, it's functionally useless. So I would say overall that that actually kind of hinders it a little tiny bit, although I'm not going to judge it that harshly. It's like bottom three in multiplayer. Oh, okay. I'm going to say overall it's like somewhere tucked between A and B tier. You can get it for free too. Yeah, I suppose you can. I don't think it's as good as the bouncer. I think it's close though. It's better than the seeker for sure. I'm going to put the liquid nitrogen gun right here. And I'm going to put the meteor gun right here. The meteor gun is very powerful. That's a real controversial placement. I don't see how it is, to be honest. The Meteor Gun is way better than the Liquid Nitrogen Gun. Let me show you how good the damage is for the Meteor Gun, for all the non-believers. The Liquid Nitrogen Gun cannot do this. Look at how much it shreds this boss. If you guys remember, this is the other health tank of Rack 2. This guy has more health than the Protopet. This guy has a little bit less health than the Snivelak boss. Well, not a little bit less, a lot of bit less, but still. He is a health fucking tank. Now look what the Meteor Gun does to him. Like, it annihilates his health bar. You can kill him using only this weapon. Whereas you need so many other weapons to kill him. If you're not using the Meteor Gun. The Meteor Gun is a DPS fucking machine. Yeah, and this is without lock-on. This would do even more DPS with lock-on. Yeah, this isn't even Mega. This is level 1. This is- this- or this is the first upgrade. This is the level 1 upgrade for the Meteor Gun. And it does this much damage. It's not as potent as Spiderbot stacking. However, it's better than the Devastator. It's better than the Bouncer. Yeah, it also has a shitload of ammo. Spiderbot stacking is situational. It is. I may actually lower the Spiderbot. Um, I'm giving it a little bit too much credit for saving the any percent runs. I'm, I know- I understand I'm giving it a little bit too much credit. I know we have the, uh, turrets- the mega turrets and the mini turrets separated, but I largely think they serve the same purpose. They are actually so good. They're not that great casually, but they can do a lot of DPS. They, they don't do that great of DPS casually, although it's still good for a- a weapon you do not have to control. They- they do a lot of damage. I think the Ouya turrets are actually a little underrated, and I think the Rack 2 turrets are a little overrated. Yeah, the Ouya turrets can follow you around as well, which is actually pretty cool. The turrets barely cost anything in both games, and they're useful for speedruns, and they can help you proxy an Ouya. Like, I think if you combine them, it actually helps their, their placing. You can clip through walls with turrets. I'm gonna use the Mega turrets here, and I'm gonna place them in A tier. I'm gonna put them at the top of A tier. I think they're great casually, I think they're great speedrun wise. Surely they're above Rift Inducer? I may actually put them in S tier. I'm gonna put them in S tier. Why is Decoy better than Turrets? Tur uh, Decoy can do literally everything. Don't forget Insta Clipping? That's true. They have far more uses than the Rift Inducer? Yeah, that's fair. The Rift Inducer really is broken in Ouya. I may actually change the placing of the Rift Inducer. I feel like I put it too high. I feel like I put the Rift Inducer too high. And I feel like I put like one or two of these weapons not high enough. I'm gonna drop the Rift Inducer to the end of S tier for now and reassess later. Actually, yeah, the Rift Inducer is still broken casually. It's broken casually and in speedruns. I am gonna put uh, turrets ahead of, of the Rift Inducer though. So now we're on the Mind Glove. If I recall correctly, the Mind Glove exists in two forms. It exists in Ouya multiplayer and it exists in Rack 1. The Mind Glove is the most broken weapon in Ouya multiplayer, hands down. It's not even close. And I'll show- yeah, this is a great example as to why. If you ever try to invade someone's base in Ouya multiplayer, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, look at that, you're dead instantly. <laughs> you literally cannot siege. It is impossible to siege without banning the Mind Glove. Unless you send in wave after wave of people. They are unbelievably busted in Ouya multiplayer. 
am I am I correct in saying that that the mind glove exists in rack one, or am I am I wrong? I, I honestly forget. You buy it on Rilgar? Okay, well if I don't remember it, it must not have been very good. Criteria: Is it useful for speed running? For for speed runs? No. Is it useful in casual play? No. It's broken as fuck in multiplayer. That's kind of about it. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's no higher than C tier. I will put it either high. I think I'm gonna put it in C tier because I think it's still more. I think that its use in multiplayer is still better than the than the shit in, that happens in D tier. I'm gonna say it's the very bottom of C tier though. Is multiplayer a criteria now? Only when it exists in multiplayer. I think you have to take it into consideration, right? It's not that terrible. Ca it's not good though. I mean, you're literally. Are you gonna use the mind glove or are you gonna use the Tesla claw? Like, you know, there's literally nothing that the Tesla claw can or the mind glove can do that other weapons don't do better. If multiplayer did not exist, this would be F tier. This would be the bottom of F tier. But because multiplayer exists, it immediately bumps it up two tiers. That's how strong it is. Okay, so now we have the mini rocket tube. The mini rocket tube in Rack 2 is actually pretty good. I'm gonna say overall, it's better than the than the Annihilator. It's not as good as the Devastator. I'm gonna put it either high B or low A. It actually is pretty good casually. It's obviously not useful for speedruns, but it just gets out DPS'd by other weapons. You can charge it, so it, it actually does a, sh a lot more damage than you would think. It's not as good as the Bouncer. It's not as good as the Liquid Nitrogen. I'm gonna put it a little bit better than the Seeker. Refire? Yeah, Mega Rockets are actually- even though they, they have very low DPS, the refire rate- or the refresh fire rate is actually good. N60 Storm time, baby. Before I place the N60 Storm, I want you guys to type where you would put the N60 Storm. Where would you put the N60 Storm? That's what I want to know, chat. Where would you put it? Oh, you guys are gonna hate this. The N60 Storm fucking sucks. It is dog shit. It's a garbage weapon. It does absolutely no damage. The upgrades are shit. It's a waste of bolts. It's not better than the Hollow Shield Glove because the Hollow Shield Glove actually does things. The Hollow Shield Glove can actually kill enemies. The N60 Storm cannot. It's good for controlling boss health bars. That's about the only thing it- Yeah. Keep- Bear this in mind. The N60 Storm does such shit damage that we actually use it in 100% runs to get the boss down to one health because every other weapon does too much damage. It's impossible to control the the how much health the boss is at without the use of the N60 Storm. That's how useless it is. It's so bad that it's the weapon we use. It's like the Fury Cutter. It's the Fury Cutter of Ratchet and Clank. If you guys don't know, in Pokemon, Fury Cutter is a move that stacks... Or wait, it, it like... I think it gets enemies to one health. That's the use of the Fury Cutter. Oh no, is that False Swipe? Oh, False Swipe, I'm sorry. It's the False Swipe of Pokemon, or of Ratchet and Clank. False Swipe gets enemies down to one health so you can capture them. So then it's useful? No. Because you can do the same thing with a wrench. It just does it a little bit faster. No one's buying the Hollow Shield by choice, but that's where the game baits you. The game baits you into thinking the N60 Storm is going to be good because you buy it early on, and you're like, oh my god, this does a lot of damage, this is great. But it doesn't. It's, it's a dog shit weapon. By your logic, wrench is F tier? No. Because the wrench actually scales with health. Okay, moving on. Nitro Launcher. The Nitro Launcher is good. I don't think it's as good as the Mini Nuke. Or like the Gravity Bomb in Rack 2. However, it's still pretty decent. I'm gonna put this below the Gravity Bomb. It's actually really fucking strong early. But it's not as good as it gets later into the game. I'm gonna put it below the Bouncer. I think I'll put it just above the Seeker. I think I'm gonna put it in B tier. I feel like I have too many weapons in B tier. Um, and the reason why this weapon's so good is that early on it's broken. And in the speedrun... So if you guys don't know, again, I'm gonna show you some speedrunning tech. For those of you who have never seen a speedrun, let me demonstrate why it's so good. This is called Rhino Bombing. Though Nitro Launcher can be used in conjunction with uh, the Rhino to do unreal DPS. So watch this. We set Nefarious up. Look at his health bar. Look where it is right now. So. You pull out the Nitro Launcher, you fire a Nitro, and then you fire the Rhino as, it is, as, it, as it's exploding and look at his health bar. Look how fast it gets obliterated. Now, obviously, this is not the same thing as the Rhin or as the Nitro Launcher itself doing all the damage, but that's still an extremely useful tech. Without it, the speed speedrun would be a lot slower. Still not that great casually. 
Uh, it's okay in multiplayer. Does it even exist in multiplayer? I forget. And it's good for speed runs, but only a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave it where it is. I think that's a fine placement. You think high A? Do you guys think it deserves to be higher? I don't think it's high A. I really don't. I think casually, it's just not that good. You know what? I'm gonna leave it where it is for now, and then I'm gonna revisit this at the end. Okay, where was I? Ah, yes, the plasma coil. The plasma coil is easily S tier. It's OP in Rack 2, it's OP in Ouya. Plasma below Rift Inducer? No, I would put it above Rift Inducer. How is Plasma S tier? Because <laughs> it's fucking sick. It kills everything. It's useful in speedruns. It has great ammo. It kills everything. <laughs> it's kind of expensive. Well, yeah, it's one of the best weapons in the entire series. Yeah, it has ridiculous range. And in Ouya, if you have a Rack 2 save file, you can get it for free. I, I don't know how you can argue this is an S tier. Exactly. Literally, the only stipulation to use this weapon is that you're looking at the enemies. I think you can I think you can argue the order here, but I think I'm going to put it above Rift Inducer for right now, and maybe put Rift Inducer over it later. Explain why it isn't money tier, because it's not as powerful as these other weapons. I might actually even put it above turrets, but we'll see. Pyrocitor. I'm going to demonstrate something, why the Pyrocitor is so good. The Pyrocitor is at least A tier. If you've never seen this before, you're gonna be blown away. Drek is the health tank of Rack 1, without question. Drek takes such an unbelievably long time to kill with any other weapon. Even the Rhino and the Tesla Claw, the two most powerful weapons in Ratchet 1, do not shred Drek that fast. But look what the Pyrocitor can do. If you were bumping up right next to, to Drek's model and you're playing on PS3 PAL, these are the stipulations. You're playing on PS3 PAL. You're playing at 60 frames per second. And you're right- you're bumped up right next to Drek. Look at the damage this does. Just look. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. It annihilates his health bar. Absolutely annihilates it. There's just no question. And you can do that with every single enemy. If you are standing right next to an enemy, as you fire the Pyrocitor at them, it do it damages him on every single frame. No other weapon does that in the entire series. It has ridiculous ammo. The gold Pyrocitor kills him even faster. The g like... Let me find a run that has old... Old, uh, the gold pyrocitor. So you can see how fast it is. Let me go to Ricky. Look at it. Look, look at the fucking gold pyrocitor. Look at this. Not less than a second. Less. You can loop him over and over because that's how fast it shreds his, his damage. You can loop him. He killed Drek in 15 ammo. The final boss of the game in 15 ammo. If this existed in every version of the game, I would I would call this the best weapon. But because it's only exclusive to PAL PS3, I can't put it as the best. Casually, if you don't know about this glitch, it's not that good. However, I think you guys need to understand that this revolutionized Ratchet 1 speedrunning. Before we had Drek Skip, before we had anything, we had the Pyrocitor glitch. The Pyrocitor has a legacy of being so un- Like, without the Pyrocitor, we would not have Ratchet as it is. This is easily S tier. It's, a, it's better than the Rift Inducer. It's better than the- Oops. It's better than the Plasma Coil. It's better than Turrets. It might be comparable to the Rhino. Better than Turrets? I'm gonna say it's actually better than Turrets. I'm gonna say it's close. I'm gonna put it just below the Rhino too. Only because- Actually, I changed my mind. I'm putting it above the Rhino. I'm putting it above the Rhino because it costs, what, 2,500 bolts? Has 240 ammo. And is still used to this day in Ratchet speedruns. Even with how specific it is. The Rhino the, the Rhino Ryans are currently on Suicide Watch because the Rack 2, the Rack 2 Rhino is being routed out right now. Rack, Rhino 2 is too versatile and powerful. I'm gonna stick with this for now. I'll, I'll think about it again at the end. It's too specific. Eh. 
I still think it's Rhino is better. Rhino has more versatility. We'll get back to it. I'm gonna put it right right here right now to, to piss all of you guys off. So what do we have now? This is the Quacko Ray? That's the Quacko Ray, right? Quacko Ray's fun, it's not very good. It's better than the chicken gun. I think it's better than the blaster. Especially when it's upgraded. I'm gonna put it just above the blaster. Ouya is the Quacko Ray is great for long suit requests. That's actually not true. It's the opposite. The chicken gun is fucking terrible for the for sewers. It causes the sewers to lag immensely. The Quacko Ray costs a fuck ton. It's not that good. It lags the game really hard if you do it too much on a certain planet. Rift is not good. Oh, yeah, Rift is good for sewers. I'm sorry. I, I misread what you said. Yeah, you never need the, the Quacko Ray. I mean, granted, you never need the Morpho Ray either. I still think it's better than the Cock Gun, even though it costs more. I may, I may reassess that. The Rhino 3. I think the Rhinocerator is underrated, but not by much. Rhino 3 V4 is unbelievably broken. Is it higher than Rhino 2? Um, as much as 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 much as this will boost the egos of the Rack 2 runners, I would actually put Rhino 2 above Rhino 3. It has a lower rate of fire. It's not that strong. The Rhino V4 is the Rhino 3 V4 is so fucking good. It's broken in speedruns. It's still really good casually. It costs a fuck ton, but bolt inflation in Ouya is really high, so it's not that much of a problem. I'm gonna say it goes right here, towards the bottom of S tier. If you take an average of V1, V4, and V5, it's bottom B. I don't agree with that, personally. Rhino 1. Oh my god, bolt farming for this thing's a fucking nightmare. What's sad? Let me tell you something that's sad. The Rhino 1, I think, is the worst Rhino. I think it's still good. It's the worst Rhino. It does less damage than the Tesla Claw. Believe it or not, it's better at screen wiping. The gold Tesla Claw does more damage than the Rhino. And the fact that you have to save 150,000 bolts for it in Rack 1, it's not that good, dude. Obviously, it's still a Rhino, so I can't justify putting it below A tier. But I will say for general usefulness, casually, it's decent. It's still great at screen wiping. It's better than any other Ratchet 1 weapon for screen wiping, by far. Second highest DPS in the game. Not used in speedruns at all. So that being said, I'm gonna put it right here, top of A tier. NG plus we use it twice. Ooh. You put the Pyrocitor in S tier off of one use. I put it off I put it in S tier for multiple reasons. 2,500 bolts, a shit ton of ammo, and it kills everything. Hey. Listen, I said I would reevaluate some stuff. I don't need any any Pyro Peters coming in here yelling at me about my placement of the Pyrocitor. Can I campaign for the bouncer to a higher spot? Alright, I, I want to I hear Loader's argument here. And it's okay, Loader, I will accept Bouncer Go Boom Boom as an acceptable argument. Meanwhile, let me rate the Sheepinator. I may put the bouncer a little bit higher. The Sheepinator is easily the best of the three transforming weapons. It's significantly better than the Quacko Ray. It's significantly better than the Morpho Ray. Sheepinator, unfortunately, is not that good anymore. Because we've routed it out of all speedrun categories for bosses. It's still pretty good, but the fact that you could sheep bosses is pretty insane. Oh, I guess it's still an 8%, yeah. Alright, it's still an 8% in APB. Uh, if you guys don't know, now you'll know. So, uh, what we, what we do in speedruns... We load the boss's model by entering the fight from the back. And then we sheep him. And we're here for like a minute, minute and a half. And when you sheep the boss, he instantly dies. That is one of the fastest ways to kill that boss. It's sick. You can also do this with a proto pet, although it's slow. I'm gonna put it, it's a free weapon. It's useful across the entire game. It's ridiculous for speedruns. But it's still not that good. I'm gonna do this. Bouncer above Annihilator. Or Devastator. Sheepinator below Devastator. It's in Ouya multiplayer, and it's pretty stupid in Ouya multiplayer. It only works for BMing purposes. The Tesla barrier is fucking ridiculous. It's broken casually. It's broken in speedruns. And when you consider that it's in two separate games, and it's broken in both of them, it has to go into SS tier. There's no way it's not SS tier. This is a game-breaking weapon. The landscape of speedruns 
and casual playthroughs of this game would both be... Re it's actually easy to level up in both Ouya and, and Rack 2. It's a lot easier than people remember it being. I may actually put this in its own tier. But for right now, I would put it above Flux. I would put it above Decoy. This is fucking hard. Because you use shields everywhere. Breaks the no damage skill points. Oh, yeah. Poking requires... Yeah. Poking wouldn't work without the shield. There are so few places I can even think of where the shield isn't useful. Wait, you can poke without the shield? Shield's just really good with it. Well, it does increase the DPS. It doesn't drop ammo. That is the only thing that's that's not OP about it. Is that it doesn't have a lot of ammo in both games. It has more ammo in Rack 2 than it does in Ouya, although it's not really a problem. It's easy to level. And you get ammo refreshes in Ouya constantly. So usually the ammo is not even a problem on the shield. It's honestly not a problem in going... It's actually more of a problem in going commando than it is in Ouya. In Ouya, even though you only get 5 ammo, it's more like tw it's more like fucking 15 as well. You know? The only downside is Chinese shield on PS3. If you guys don't know, on PS3 there's a glitch where it, both in Rack 2 and Rack 3, you can get hit once and the shield just pops. And it happens. It's a PS3 thing. I don't know why. It happens on PS2, but only if you've died. That's true. I'm gonna put this right here for now and think about it later. This is my gut reaction. Actually, my gut reaction is this. That's my gut reaction. I may actually put that as number one in its own tier. Hydra, uh, spinning Hydra? It's actually better than you guys think it is. The spinning Hydra is actually not that bad. It's not F tier. It's not F tier, it's, and it's... If it is D tier, it's at least the the top of D tier. The hy the spitting Hydra is actually good. Once it gets to level 6, it does ridiculous damage. It's boring to use. I don't really think it's boring to use. I think it's very visually nice. Like, it's a, it's a very visually aesthetic gun. Level 1, levels 1 and 2, it's not that good, but it's also an early game weapon. So bear this in mind. The spitting Hydra costs, like, what, 20,000? Something like that. It's not amazing early, but it's still good. And then as it upgrades, it gets more and more ridiculous. It's more expensive than that 40k? Okay, so that works against it. It is 40k. However, from V4 onwards, especially if you're in a casual playthrough, V4 onwards, it's nuts. It's so good at, at clearing small enemies. And when you get to V5 and higher, it's even better at clearing uh, larger enemies as well. So I'm going to say this is a C-tier weapon. I'm going to say it's below the Mind Glove. Maybe I'll swap... I will, actually, I'm going to swap this with the Agents. I think agents are still better, but I think that spinning hydra is not much worse. All right, now for the suck. So the suck cannon is unironically good. You guys ever think about that? You guys ever think about how, how the suck cannon is actually good? And one hits all small enemies. In rack one, it's not as powerful. In Ouya, it's unbelievable. It is free in rack one, that's true. It's also technically free in Ouya. So it's free in both games if you have a, a save file for rack one. Free ammo, extremely useful. I don't know if you guys know this, the DPS of the Suck Cannon is ridiculous. You can kill NG plus enemies with a level 1 Suck Cannon in 2 hits. Like, on Velden, the Spitting Hydra takes like a year and a half to kill one of the bigger enemies. The Suck Cannon takes 2 hits. I'm not gonna put it in S tier because there's so many other better weapons in S tier. I think it could be low A though. I think it's at least high B. In Uyo, you can get the Suck Cannon to V5. Before you even enter the dropship on Velden. Anybody who says that it's ju it's only better than the Blitz Cannon, you guys are severely underestimating the damage output of the Suck Cannon. It's completely free. Free ammo. Shit tons of damage. Clears all small enemies. It's actually so fucking good. In Rack 1, it's not as good, but it's still really fucking good. Oh, dude. Bouncer... <laughs> Bouncer Bobs are gonna be so pissed about this. Bouncer Bobs are going to be livid. Do we have a clip of Suck Cannon DPS? Okay, so we go back to Velden. We equip the Suck. Look at this. So I've, I sucked up two enemies on Velden, and it goes to V2. You can legit get the shit to V5. Before you even exit this area. So I'm leveling up the Nitro Launcher right now, but you'll see. Look at this. I'm going to suck up all these enemies. V3. V4. And if I had focused, look at this. Almost V5. 
before the first fucking rotation. So now I'm sucking up crates because you can suck up crates to get ammo as well. Golden Suck Cannon is also good. Okay, Synthenoids. Synthenoids are... <sighs> Synthenoids and turrets have the same parents. They, they are siblings. The turrets, they're the older child. They were the one who got all the accolades. They banged all the hottest chicks. They were a straight A student without even trying. They got into an Ivy League school and graduated with honors without trying again, partying every weekend, banging hot chicks, and now he makes $150,000 a year. The Synthenoids are the weed smoking burnout son that barely graduated high school and now runs a gas station. The Synthenoids are not good. I'm gonna put the Synthenoids. They ruin iframes, they're not that bad DPS, they're not good. But they just kind of add on to whatever you have. I think they're better than the drone device. But not by much. What do I have? Doom gloves? They'd often they often cause less DPS, yeah. They actually ruin a lot of shit that like if you were wanted to put out even more damage. So they're actually even more useless than you would think. I'm gonna say they're not better than the agents. I actually I agree with with the various turnip. They're not better than the agents. They're not better than the spitting hydra. I'm gonna put them right above the uh, drone device. Oh, the taunter. Oh, the taunter. Ah, uh, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> the taunter fucking sucks. <laughs> so, the taunter is literally the only thing that's good about the taunter and the only reason why I won't put it at the lowest is because it's useful for infinite bolt farming. If you guys don't know this, this is literally a money strat. You go out of bounds on Realgar. Into the racetrack. You go where these big ass boxes are. You can tape down your circle button and leave this on overnight. And you will continually farm bolts without having to do anything. That's the only useful thing for, that the taunter does. Aside from that, it's functionally useless. What? 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 What is this? ACM is saved. So Yankee has the taunter. What the fuck is happening right now? I've never actually seen this before. We're gonna take a look at this. No fucking way. Wait a minute. No fucking way. There's absolutely no fucking way. No fucking way! What? Are you fucking serious? What's the time save on that? It's like a full minute. You turn me into a taunter, Trenton. Infinite <laughs> time. It literally saves so much time, you revert back to when you were 14. <laughs> and don't eat- Oh, so it saves way more than a minute. So it's good for the ACM speedrun, and that's about it. Uh, aside from that, it's useless. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it in D tier. Alright, you know what? For the sake of memes, I'm gonna put the taunter... This is a tough call. I'm either gonna put it right here or right here. <laughs> I'll put it right here. So now we're on to the Tesla Claw. In Rack 2, it's okay. It's it's actually not that good in Rack 2. It's actually, eh, it's kind of stinky. But in Rack 1, it's the highest DPS weapon. Tesla Claw is used for old school, but that's about it. Low S tier easy. I'm not gonna say S tier because I feel like it has to be good in both games to be S tier. The gold bomb glove is so ridiculous. We use pretty much only that for old school. So it's kind of stinky in rack two and it's amazing in rack one. So I think it should be somewhere between A and B. Is it better than the Sheepinator? Maybe. Is it better than the Annihilator? Definitely. Is it better than the Bouncer? 
Yeah. Well, maybe not. Suck Cannon is good in Rack 1 and amazing in Ouya. Put it right there. And I'm gonna move this down to the top of B. Alright, Visibon Victor time. Guys. Let me tell you something. The Visibon kind of sucks. It's okay in Rack 1. I'd rather use the Devastator. Or the, uh, yeah, the Devastator. And it's garbage in Rack 2. It's absolutely fucking garbage. But it's fun to use. It is very cool. It is a very cool weapon. Visibom is also better than Pulse Rifle. True. Yeah, maybe I should move the Pulse Rifle down. Oh, no, wait. The Pulse Rifle's in a pretty good spot, I think. It's still better- Visibom is still better than, than the Pulse Rifle in Rack 2. It's actually pretty good in Rack 1. And it's a cool concept for a weapon. I'm gonna put it- I'm gonna put it above the Annihilator. For sure. Do I put it above the Lancer? I'm gonna put it right there. And I'm gonna move this down to C tier. It is free in Rack 2? Yeah, but it's garbage. <laughs> if somebody gives me a sack of garbage and says, Here, take this. It's free. I'll say, Thanks. I can't even do anything with this. It's useless. Punchy Punch Wallop time. Where are all the Walloper Williams in chat? If you're a Walloper William- Oh, Walloper Wally? I like that one. Wall if you're a Walloper Wally in chat, type 1. Well, all of you people typing 1, I have some bad news for you. It's amazing in Rack 1 speedrunning. It's a funny concept casually. Although it's not that great casually. And in Rack 2, it's actually bottom tier. So I'm gonna put it... There. That's where I'm gonna put it. It's used so much in Rack 1 NG+. Yes, and it's great in Rack 1 NG+, don't get me wrong. But that's the only place it's- it's- If you rate it lower than B, I'll force it into a Rack 2 route. By all means, Manto. The whip is actually so fucking good. The whip is bare minimum A tier. Bare minimum. The whip is the single most useful tool in Ratchet 3 speedrunning, aside from the charge boots. Casually, it's actually really good. And I'll tell you why. Because it infinitely stun locks enemies. It doesn't matter how weak it is, it's only bad against bosses. Whip is cool, but you only use it for one category in one game. We use it in every Ouya category. Casually, it actually does a lot of damage when it's fully upgraded. It wipes small groups of enemies really easily because the whip extends outwards and it does a lot of damage. And the enemies it doesn't kill, if you hit them with the whip directly, it stun locks them in place. They will never be able to come out of a stun lock if you keep whipping them over and over. It's actually really fucking good. It is a fucking solid weapon. I'm going to put the whip... For overall usefulness, including speed tech, including damage, including cool visual aesthetics, including how cool the concept is. I'm gonna put it right- nope. Right there. At least. I may reevaluate that. The wrench. What do we do with the wrench? The lightsaber is busted. The level 2 wrench in Rack 2 is busted. Wrench for Rack 2 movement? That's true, you can do movement tech with the wrench in Rack 2. Silence tech and Ouya, wrench jumps in Rack 2, yeah. So casually, it's actually kind of nice. It's still a really strong weapon, casually. And in Ouya, the damage scales with your health. In Rack 1, it is pretty booty. Oh wait, no. It's actually not that booty. It's a, it's not booty because it extends outwards. It actually, the, the hitbox of the wrench is fucking enormous. Uh, so it's really not that bad. It's like as useful as the bomb glove in a lot of situations. First person wall climbing, wrench SIs. Yeah, I actually, I was gonna disagree with you guys, but I, the more, you guys have kind of convinced me. Um, I'm gonna say the wrench is by far one of the most useful tools in the entire game. I don't think it's necess- oh. It actually is super game breaking, now that I think about it. In speedrunning, you have rack 2 wall climbing. You have wrench SIs in all three games. You have movement tech in rack 2. You can cancel the ref the refresh rate of at weapon fire. You can yeah, you can wrench swing the cancel upgrade animations. You can refresh the rate of fire with the weapon by swinging the wrench, pulling the weapon back out and firing the weapon. The wrench is actually the most useful tool I can even think of. I think this is at least SS tier. Yeah, and it's literally free in every game. I actually think this bumps the 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 sniper rifle down to S tier. And I think I have to put wrench. It's at least here. It's at least there, right? You can clip at the wrench, that's true. You can you can clip at the wrench. More useful than decoys? 
I actually can't disagree. Is it as good as the shock cannon? Guys, do we think it's as good as the shock cannon? I'm actually gonna take the, the crowd consensus here for this one. This is actually a pretty wide spread. I mean, some of you guys actually said number one. I got a lot of you guys said number one. I just don't know if I can. I don't know if I, if I can feel the power of a number one. I just don't think it's as good as the shield. Yeah, I'm actually, the more I think about it, the more I actually would put shield as number one. How does that look? Do you think that looks okay? Shot cannon over wrench? Yeah, don't get me wrong, the shot cannon's amazing, but the wrench is good for literally everything. Shot cannon is the most versatile gun. Actually, that is true. It's good at clearing waves, it's good at clearing single enemies. And it's free. Yeah, but, oh, first person wrench climbing exists. No, I'm not putting anything above hover bomb, aside from the shield. The hover bomb's staying at number two. You guys don't get it. You really don't get it. The Zodiac. It's not F tier. It's not D tier. It's not C tier. It's it, it's definitely at least B tier. It's not F tier. It's not awful. You guys, listen, every speedrunner understands how good the Zodiac is, and we don't even play the game casually. You can get ammo and crates for it. The reason you guys hate the Zodiac is because it's the Rack 2 version of the Rhinocerator. That's why you guys hate it. It makes casual playthroughs so much easier because it just annihilates so many enemies. I hate the Zodiac because I shoot it and for some reason nothing happens. It's it's a line of sight weapon, Biz. You have to be looking at all the enemies you want to kill with it. Wow, I don't think there's any weapon more polarizing than, than this weapon. Okay, hold on. I want to make another poll. I want to see- I want to see what you guys actually think of this. 10k to clear the screen in 10 seconds is not a good deal. It actually is. In, uh, in Rack 2, if you have a times 10 multiplier, you're getting at least 3k for every enemy you kill. Even if it's like times 8, you're getting 3k for every enemy you kill. At least. You can make back- if you kill 20 enemies with a Zodiac in one hit, if you either switch weapons or wrench, the ammo will not be used. I'm telling you guys, this shit's not that bad. It's so ridiculous. It's honestly so ridiculous on Grelvin. You can kill 20 yetis at once with it on Grelvin. Is it useful for speedrunning? No. Is it overpriced? Yes. Is the ammo count suck? Yeah, but you can find ammo in, for it in ammo crates, so it's not that bad. Yeah, and it's fine in Hundo. It's fine. It's not great. It's fine. Is it fun? No. I don't know. Dude, all the bouncer fucking Benjamins are coming out again being like, Yeah, but I like when the- I like when the weapon goes BOOM! I like when the weapon explodes, and there's lights, and flashes everywhere, and um... It makes me feel really good on the inside, you know? Like, it really makes me feel like really hot and- and heavy. And, uh, I come in my pants just a little tiny bit. Honestly, Bouncer is S tier. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. They just don't stop. The Bouncer Benjamins, they just don't stop. Okay, let me put this fucking Zodiac down so we can move on with our lives. Alright, I'm gonna put the Zodiac... I'm gonna put it right here. It stays. Infector last, yes. N60 Storm, yes. The Chopper. Do I want to put the Chopper above the Shield Charger, or the uh, Hollow Shield Glove? I'm thinking maybe. I'm thinking yeah. Do I want to put it above the Pulse Rifle? I'm thinking yeah. Hollow Shield heals you, Hollow Shield blocks damage, and it hurts enemies. Those are three things the Infector can't do. Chopper I'm going to put below Pulse. Drone Device... I'm going to move above Synthenoids, but below Spitting Hydra. Chopper above the Hydra it isn't actively obnoxious to fire. I actually love firing the Chopper, or the, uh, the Hydra. The Chopper DPS is actually decent. Is it actually good? I think upgraded it is. Kills Swarms pretty well. Yeah, I'll put it above Synthenoids. Alright, there we go. I'm putting it, and I'm moving this above Synthenoids as well. The Glove of Doom. The Glove of Doom is bad in Rack 1 and actually really good in Ouya. That's why I put it where I put it. The Mind Glove is busted in Ouya Multiplayer and dog shit in Rack 1, so it's like a little bit better than the Agents of Doom. The Chicken Gun is funny, it's free, and it's fine. I don't know. The Blaster? I think I need to move some stuff out of B tier. I'm gonna do this.
I think I'm gonna do that. I think that makes it ba a little bit more balanced. Blaster above Taunter. Hollow Shield is an F. Actually, I agree with that. Synthenoids are F, though. Taunter above Blaster. I think Blaster should go above Taunter. And Walloper. Actually, I may move the Walloper up a bit. The Walloper is so fucking busted in, in uh, Rack 1 speedrunning. And it's also just a really cool concept. So, I'm going to move... This here. I'm going to move this down here. I think that the, the, the multi-disc gun is better than the Blitz Cannon. And a little bit worse than the Annihilator. I'm going to, I'm going down up, guys. I'm going down up. The Zodiac, I think is... I think I should probably put this above the Lancer. The Lancer is an early game weapon and the Zodiac is a late game weapon. So I'm going to put the Zodiac above the Lancer. What is this? The Nitro Launcher? Nitro Launcher, I think, should be above mini, uh, the Mini Rocket Tube. I'm going to move this down to B tier. I'm going to move Liquid Nitrogen just above it. And this is the Sheepinator, right? Oh, man. There's so many busted weapons. Sheepinator goes above this as well. Swap Sheepinator and Liquid Nitrogen Gun. I actually do agree that this is more useful than this. God, this is so hard. All right, let me think where the where the tiers cleanly divide. Let me think about that as well. These three weapons are a step worse than these ones. Yes, I can agree with that statement. All of these weapons are worse than the C tier weapons. Yes, I agree with that. All of the C tier weapons are worse than the B tier weapons. For the most part, I agree with that. Yeah, I think I actually I think I actually do agree with that. Liquid nitrogen gun better than the bouncer. I actually do agree with that. I'm gonna move this here. I'm gonna move this up. I think liquid nitrogen gun is like the gatekeeper of A tier. Bouncer demo- do I want it to- actually, the bouncer is a pretty good casual weapon, but that's about it. A tier is pretty packed, I will say that. Actually, I, I actually changed my mind again. I am putting the liquid nitrogen gun here. I think it is worse than the bouncer. Liquid nitrogen is the best weapon. It's- it's my favorite weapon. It's not better than the bouncer. <laughs> Let's be honest. Liquid nitrogen gun and nitro eruptor. I think I would put the nitro eruptor in A tier sooner than I would the liquid nitrogen gun. But the A tier is just so packed. Oh my god. Actually, okay. I'm gonna bite. This still doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right having this here. I love the weapon, don't get me wrong. I do it doesn't feel right. I'm leaving it in B tier. Is the Annihilator really that bad? It's quite bad. It it's really not that good. Like, it's fine, don't get me wrong, but... Eh. Move Sheep and Eater, Bouncer, and Nitro to B. No, Sheep Eater stays in A. Sheep Eater stays in A. Bouncer stays in A is the best casual weapon. Like, that doesn't have any practical application in speedrunning. And Nitro Launcher... Nitro Eruptor is so fucking good. Rift Ripper is in S tier. It's the bottom of S tier. Nitro to top of B. If anything, I'm putting the Bouncer there first. The Bouncer is in both games. The Bouncer is free in Ouya. The Bouncer is good in both games. It has a lot of ammo. It has a lot of DPS if you use wrench canceling. And the Nitro Launcher is really only good for Rhino Bombing. Actually, that's not true. It actually is a fucking crazy powerful weapon. I think they're both B tier, or I think they're both A tier. Suck Cannon should be below Liquid Nitrogen Gun. I disagree. Actually, ooh, yeah, the Suck Cannon kind of slipped under my radar. It's free. It has infinite ammo. It's powerful. And it can deal with a lot of enemies. This is tough. I think A and B, there's a lot of arguability between all these. No, the Suck Cannon's actually really fucking good casually. It actually is. No one uses Suck Cannon? That doesn't mean it's not good. No one used AP Master Yi until Alex Itch came around. And then it got banned. Or it got, you know, reworked. Why the fuck is Meteor Gun up in A? Because it's a DPS fucking machine. That's why. Alright, you know what? You guys have convinced me. I, I, I think I did overrate the Suck Cannon. I'm gonna put it... I'm gonna put it right here below the liquid nitrogen gun. Spitting Hydra underrated? Now that's a take. I love the Spitting Hydra, don't get me wrong. Actually, I, I do agree. I do agree it's better than these. Actually, I'll move it up to C tier. I wanna move the cock gun down here. Tesla Claw should be closer to Rhino. Taunter above Spitting Hydra. Actually, yeah. Better than the Quacko Ray? Yeah. Better than the Blitz Cannon. Yes. But that's as far as I'm putting it. 
Hydra is better than Blaster. Blitz Cannon over Hydra? No, I disagree. The Spinning Hydra is better than you guys give it credit for. Why is the Clank Zapper so low? It's easily the worst weapon in the entire trilogy. Yeah, the Tauntra has the money glitch. Walloper behind Lancer, behind Zodiac, behind Seeker. Behind Mini Rocket Tube. Behind Devastator. I think the Mini Rocket Tube... I think I've... Is this where I put the Suck Cannon? This feels better. I love the Suck Cannon, don't get me wrong, but... The Mini Rocket Tube and the, and the Devastator are actually pretty good. Mini Rocket Tube is actually pretty decent. I'm actually gonna do this. This is my split second decision that I'm making right now. Then the Bouncer, then the Sheep, then Tesla Claw. Meteor Gun, Spider Bot Glove. Mini Nuke. Gold Bomb Glove. Rhino 1. That seems pretty balanced, actually. I think that's pretty good. Visibomb is A tier. It does no damage in Rack 2. It's actually dog shit. Rhino 1 B tier. It costs a lot. Like a fuck ton. Less DPS than the Tesla Claw. Still the number one weapon clearing. The best at crowd control. Cl crowd clearing in Rack 1. It's really not that bad. Mini Nuke under Spider and Meteor. Actually, yeah, I think I have overrated the, the, the Mini Nuke. Maybe I'd put Sheepinator over these two as well. No. Because casually the Sheepinator isn't very good. Mini Nuke is as slow as the Bouncer. And it does less damage. But you guys have to consider that the Mini Nuke is free. It's not about... Guys, if this were a list of just overpowered weapons, it would be entirely Rhinos and fucking all this other shit. You guys have to understand this isn't just power of weapon. This is power of weapon against cost against utility. NG Plus Mini Nuke is not free and is in fact stupid expensive. Is it really 1.5 million? Bouncer isn't that expensive. Okay, you guys have convinced me. This one's all for all the Bouncer Billies out there. Okay, so Spirebot Glove, I think that placement's fine. Gold Bl Bomb Glove is easily better than all the other ones on this list. Rhino 1. It's still the second best Rack 1 weapon. It's still the second best. Well, except for maybe the Pyrocitor. I may have put the Pyrocitor a bit high. The problem is, if this were only considering Ratchet 1, I would put the Tesla Claw above the Rhino 1. However, the Tesla Claw in Rack 2 exists, and it's bad. I'm gonna move that there. Does that feel better? Ahead of the Spider-Bot Glove, not as good as the Gold Bomb Glove. Bomb Glove to S? I actually agree. I think the Bomb Glove should be the bottom of S tier. The Rack 1 Bomb Glove is already really fucking good. Like, that, that alone is A tier. The Rack 2 Gold Bomb Glove is broken. Quacko Ray is pretty underrated. Not too expensive and fully upgraded. And you can basically just push up, hold O, and clear any level. Where do I have it right now? Bottom of D tier? Eh, you know what? You've convinced me. I'll swap these two. Oh, that's not the Quacko Ray? Oh, sorry. You're right. Where did I put the Quacko Ray? Oh, right here. No, I think that's I think that's that that feels right to me. The Quack Array isn't isn't that good, unfortunately. Why is the Mind Glove so high? Because it's it's the number one weapon in Ouya multiplayer, hands down. Godfrey, it's okay casually. It's okay. Speedrunning wise, it's obviously amazing, but that's not the only criteria we're looking at. It's really expensive for a Rack 1 weapon, and even though it uses zero am or, uh, infinite ammo, it's still not that good. Because there's a lot of enemies that can dodge, like, that are up in the air and you can't hit them. Or they can hit, like, they're just too far away for you to actually do anything useful. Oh, Hollow Shield should be higher? No, it really shouldn't. It's really not that good. Like, it, it, it's fine. I, I don't think it's FT at all. I would say the only possible change I would make is putting it above Pulse. And that's it. In fact, I think I will do that. I think I will put it above- actually, I think I will put it above Pulse. Drone device should be above the chicken gun? It is kind of a shield, isn't it? Yeah, I'll do that. No, the hollow shield is usable. It actually does a lot of damage to enemies, and it heals you, and it blocks shots. And if you throw the, the hollow shield right at enemies, they just blow up. Hover bomb gun is right here, number two. Okay, I'm moving on. S tier. Gold bomb glove is worse than the whip is worse than the Rift Inducer. 
Whip, sh Whip should be above Rift Inducer. Well, yeah. Yo, thanks for the 50 bits, Tyrant. I will always think the Blaster should be higher than the Quacko Ray. Maybe. Rift is good. Rift is amazing casually. Whip is better speedrun wise. I think I should give the edge to casual though. Plasma Coil is better than the Rift Inducer. I agree with that. It's a very powerful weapon in both Rack 2 and Rack 3. You can get it in Rack 3 for free. It has great ammo and it clears enemies very easily from very far away. I agree with that. Plasma Coil is worse than the Rhino. The Rhino 3. I agree with that. The Rhino 3 is worse than the turrets. I agree with that. The turrets are worse than the Rhino 2. I agree with that. The Rhino 2 is worse than the, than the Pyrocitor. I think Pyro stays in S tier, but it, it, it should go down a little bit. Plasma Coil is a great weapon, don't get me wrong. It's just not as good. Pyro is super situational, I agree. Should only be high S tier in PAL. Yeah, that's pretty fair, actually. It is pretty dog otherwise. It has a lot of ammo, but it's not super useful. Yeah, maybe I did pretty heavily overrate the Pyrocitor. Let me bring the Pyrocitor down. Worse than this. Worse than that. I'm still putting it in S tier. I'm gonna put it just below the Plasma Coil. Because I don't think you guys understand how much that changed the landscape of Ratchet 1 speedruns. I'm leaving it there for legacy purposes. Ratchet 1 speedrunning would not be a thing without the Pyrocitor. That's why I'm rating it so highly. So yes, I'm biased, but so is every tier list ever. The Flux Rifle is better than the Rhino 2. This doesn't feel right to me. I feel the, the Flux Rifle should go underneath the Rhino 2. I feel like that might actually feel a bit better. And now the Mighty 5. Exactly, Scott. I, I think it deserves its place in, in high S tier. I don't think it's SS, though. Because there's plenty of other stuff that's, that's like... SS tier is like game-breaking for multiple reasons. S tier is like game-breaking in one capacity, you know? And A is like, does a lot. Wait, where did I put the Spider-Bot glove? I feel like Spider-Bot's a little low. I feel like Spider-Bot should be above the Rhino 1. I think I'm okay with, with Spider-Bot holding down A tier. The Golden Bomb glove is game-breaking. Like, it's actually so fucking good. It's 2,000 bolts maximum for a weapon as strong as the Bouncer. In fact, in many ways, it's better than the Bouncer because the fire rate is extremely fast. The damage is ridiculous. The ammo costs one bolt per ammo. You can find plenty of ammo in ammo crates. You can use it as AoE. You can use it for proxying. It is an S tier weapon. Yeah, you can proxy with the bomb glove. Can I make an argument for the middle of C? I've already, I'm sure there's no argument that you've made that I haven't already made. But the problem is, Look at all the other weapons. You, like, I just... I can't get behind the Hollow Shield Glove being better than the Chopper, the Agents of Doom, the Mind Glove in, in Ouya Multiplayer, the Chicken Gun, the Drone Device, the Taunter, the Blaster, you know, like, these are all really solid weapons. So I think S tier actually looks pretty good. It beats the Mind Glove in Ouya Multiplayer. It's dog shit in Rack 1, but it's broken in Ouya Multiplayer. Like, broken, broken. Like, you lose if you don't have it broken. I think your list is dead on for what you use in the Ratchet & Clank games. Oh, thank you, Tyrant. What's the Taunter do? You can get infinite bolts with it. Blitzgun was way stronger than the Mind Glove in Ouya Multiplayer. The Blitzgun is great as well, don't get me wrong, but I already have the Blitzgun higher up. Actually, yeah, I forgot about Blitzgun in Multiplayer. Maybe I will put this back up. I'm gonna actually have this up here, holding down C tier. I forgot about Multiplayer. The Blitzgun in Rack 2 is already fine, and the Blitzgun in Ouya Multiplayer is fucking crazy good. Was Ouya Multiplayer any good? It was actually really fun. Rhino 2 to SS? Maybe. I could be convinced. Yeah, that's true, Cooster. That's actually very true. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that Rhino 2 belongs in SS tier? It is a pretty pivotal weapon. It's only a million bolts. It has 100 ammo, but you find ammo in ammo crates. And it's the second highest DPS weapon. You can neutral with it, I think bottom of SS. All the current SS weapons are good. I do agree with the placement of all the S weapons. I just don't know if I should move up the Rhino 2. I don't think it's as good as SS weapons. I really don't. I think the SS weapons, like... Yeah, SS needs to be game-changing. Like, if it's gonna be SS, like, I think you guys are undervaluing how strong an SS category is. These five weapons currently in SS break the games. You think Rhino 2 should be top of A tier? 
Damn, that's a spicy opinion. Shock Cannon is not as good as Rhino 2. It is, though. Because it clears waves. It's useful in every category. Yeah, Shock Cannon is better against bosses than the Rhino 2. The Rhino 2 is only useful in the NG Plus categories, but the Shock Cannon is useful in literally every Ouya category. It has similar DPS, if not better, than the Rhino 2. Where would Ouya NG Plus be without turret clips? That is true. Turret clipping is pretty broken. Rhino 2 is really versatile, though. I mean, is it? Is it really that versatile? Use it to kill enemies, use it to kill bosses, use it to neutral. Those are the only three uses. You don't even use it to kill enemies, you only use it to kill bosses. Like, you just ignore enemies. Rhino 2 can do a ton of movement. But that's only because Rack 2 doesn't have that many convenient weapons to neutral with. Like, Ouya, the shot cannon does it all. The ammo count is nice, the DPS is good. Yeah, exactly. I would say that if poking didn't exist, I would put the Rhino 2 into SS tier. But now the hover bomb does literally everything the Rhino does, but better. Except for maybe wave clear. Like, killing multiple waves of enemies. If poking didn't exist, I would put Rhino, in, Rhino 2 in, in SS tier. But because it exists, I can't justify it. Rack 2 has auto lock for enemies. Eh... I mean, Rhino has lock-on, but until you get the lock-on, the, the, like, it, it's just not as powerful. The Rack 2 firing, the Rhino 2 firing sound is orgasmic. I mean, that's not wrong. Yeah, the, the Rhino 2 aiming is worse than people remember it. If it has lock-on, then you're set. But the Rhino 2 aiming, aside from that, is, like, really weird. It's like a weird flower pattern. Or, like, a star formation. It's a cycle, it, it basically, it goes in one giant star in a cycle. Rhino 2 makes casual Rack 2 into an autopilot game, it should be bottom of SS. It is pretty broken casually, I suppose. Yeah, I think you guys are really underestimating how good SS is. I'm glad you think so, Tyrant. Why is the decoy glove so much higher than the mega turret glove? Because it's in Rack 1 and 2. Well, then again, I suppose the turret is in Rack- Yeah, you know what? I'm actually- If anything, I'm gonna move the, the turret up to the bottom of SS tier. Maybe I'll even put it above de- Uh, no, I'll put it below decoy. The turret DPS upgraded is dumb. Yeah, actually that is true. That is why I had it in the in S in the first place. Wait, where did I have this before? I had this here or here? Here? I think I put, I'm gonna leave that there. Below splitter? Okay. The splitter rifle really does redefine Ouya. People don't realize that. Without the splitter rifle, the category would be so much slower. All of them. Every category. No, Denaz, it's fine in casual play. Casually, the Rhino 2 is busted. Speed run wise, it's good. I'm gonna do that. If anything, it's not even the, the movement tech argument that got me, it was the casual argument. The fact that this just autopilots the game casually. Like, the meta is get the Rhino and then you're done. You can just beat the entire game. Like the Rhino 2, you you buy it and then you know you don't need a single other weapon the entire game. Undervalues SS. That's actually pretty true. I actually agree with what Ram says. If, if the Rhino 2 is SS, then, then so are the splitter rifle and the turrets. I actually agree with that. The Tesla in Rack 1 is autopilot, but the Tesla Claw in Rack 2 is dog shit. That's why it, it falls to A tier. Okay, I'm done with S tier. SS tier. Decoy Glove is worse than Shock Cannon, is worse than the Wrench, is worse than the Hover Bomb, is worse than the Shield. Do we agree with that? Do we ex exist in a world where we say the Shield is the most broken weapon in all of Ratchet & Clank? Decoy is better than Shock? I actually agree with that. I agree with Decoy above Shot Cannon. If only because Decoy is broken in both Rack 1 and 2. How do we feel about the Tetra Bomb? Can you explain why the shield is broken? It mitigates damage. It deals more damage than the majority of other weapons. It's useful in every capacity. There's never a situation where you don't want to have a shield on. It levels up quickly. It just does everything. It does literally everything. Can you ever think of a situation where you don't want to be wearing a shield? There's like three. Ever. And it's like, if I'm wearing a shield here, it'll crash the game. I think Tetra Bomb is overrated. It's not overrated, 420. The Hover Bomb is the highest DPS weapon in the entire trilogy. Free. There is no weapon that does more DPS than the Hover Bomb. Why is Wrench in SS tier? It does everything. First off, if you run out of ammo for other weapons, it has actually really good damage in all three games. In Ouya, it scales with health. So the more health you have, the more uh, damage you do. It has utility. Use it for movement. Use it for every single movement trick. Wrench SIs. Rack 2, you can whip jump with it. 
Uh, rack 2, first person wall climb. The level 2 wrench in rack 2 shreds the proto pet. The lightsaber is beyond busted in Ouya. Like, even if the DPS of the wrench isn't as powerful, the utility is ridiculous. I don't think Shock can be SS if Rhino 2 and Splitter aren't. No, dude, Shock Cannon, I, I think the Shock Cannon is just straight up better. Where would Ouya speedrunning be without the Shock Cannon? I know you can say that about the Splitter Rifle. There are ways to kill Nefarious without the Splitter Rifle. There's no way to beat the game without the Shock Cannon. Shock Cannon, I think, is more central than Tetra Bomb is to GC. I actually do agree with you guys. I think Wrench should be above H-Bomb. Now here's the question. I'm leaving H-Bomb and SS tier. Do we leave it as number 3, 4, or 5? I think putting the Shock Cannon behind the decoy is fine. But I think that the Tetra Bomb is either 3 or 5. Yeah, you guys actually really don't get it. I'm willing to put the wrench over the Tetra Bomb, but I'm actually not willing to put Decoy or, or, uh, or Shock Cannon above it. It's only useful for insane DPS. That's not true. It's useful for a lot of things. It's good casually. It's actually great casually. It has the best momentum in Rack 2 speedrunning, like the best movement preservation. Speedrunners get it. Speedru People who have been following Rack 2 get it. Casually, it's a little worse than the Rhino. But speedrun-wise, it's so much better than the Rhino that it routed out the Rhino. Like, it's so much better speedrunning-wise than the Rhino that we literally don't use the Rhino anymore. We have three wrench-only categories and no shield-only- oh my god. It literally- yeah, it literally gains speed. Tetra Bomb takes forever to upgrade and the Shock Cannon is free and upgrades quickly. These are the arguments before us. No, the Shock Cannon is amazing late game. No, 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 the Shock Cannon is amazing at, at all points in the game. There's never a single point where you don't want to be using the Shock Cannon. You say that, but it's literally not. It literally is! We use the Shock Cannon for everything! A rack 1, 2, and 3 worse without the wrench than 2 and 3 would be without the Shield Charger? No. How are you still doing this? We've had a lot of discussion on this, Franz. I didn't expect this to take 4 hours either. I expected to be able to do runs today. 4 hour vid, oops. I'm gonna leave this as is. I can't- I can't justify changing anything anymore. I think I'm actually gonna leave this as it is. We're done, guys. Title of tier list. Ratchet and Clank OG Trilogy Weapons. Casually and speedrunning wise. This was tough. Alright, it's locked in. This going on YouTube? Yeah, this is going on YouTube. If you guys want to say hi to the YouTube uh, viewers, you feel feel free to do so.